Chapter 4, Section 6, Binary Fission and the Microbial Growth Cycle. Remember, I told you back the first lecture, Chapter 1, whenever a microbiologist uses the term growth, they do not mean getting bigger. What they mean is that their culture, their microbe population is increasing in numbers. There you go. That's it. That is what they are talking about. So it's not the individual cells are getting bigger. No. Okay. You grew. You went from an infant to an adult. From a few trillion cells that was born to the 20 or so trillion that are sitting there listening to me right now. Whereas you use mitosis to make new cells, to make copies, to make more. Microbes, bacteria, archaea, use binary fission. Binary fission literally means, binary means two, fission means splitting. One cell divides, becomes two. Those two cells will divide, become four, and so on. It's relatively simple on how this occurs. The bacteria, if it's, un, you know, will go through, make copies of its chromosome, make copies of any plasmids, the accessory little mini chromosome thing that may be there. It's already got a bunch of ribosomes. It's got a bunch of the polymerases and all the other enzymes. Well, then it just goes and makes a wall, a partition, a wall that divides the cell in half or divides off part of the cell. Some cells, some bacterial species, it's in half. Other ones, as we're going to see in this section, it may be less than. It's not an equal division. Cool. Cool. You now end up with two daughter cells. Two daughter cells that, as I've said before many, many times, are clones of each other. Remember the colonies that I keep talking about. It starts with one, one becomes two, two, four, eight, 16, 32. Come back tomorrow and there's a few million clones, a few million daughter cells, all genetic copies of that one first original. How long it takes? to go from one to two, two to four. That's known as the generation time or some um, old time OG microbiologists refer to this as the doubling time because you're doubling the number. One, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, double, double, double. It's gonna differ for each microbe. And then it's gonna differ for each microbe on whatever environment they're in. Are they at an optimal temperature? Are they at the optimal pH? Are they at the optimal this, optimal that? Under optimal conditions, everything's near perfect. E. coli doubles every 20 minutes. What that means, you start with one, 20 minutes later, you have two. 20 minutes later, four. 20 minutes later, eight. Two four, eight, 20, 20, 20. So that means you start with one in an hour, you now have eight. An hour later, eight, 16, 32, you now have 64. So you went from one to 64 in two hours. You go, you do the math. So that's three doublings every hour. 12 hours, that's 30, what, 30 some doublings? 36 doublings? Two to the 36, wow. It's a million, all starting with one. So what you see, one cell will literally just start laying down new peptidoglycan. The cell membrane gets pulled in. The cytoplasmic membrane gets pulled in. The peptidoglycan layer starts to reshape. 
whether it's gram positive, gram negative, doesn't matter. It starts to do the same. If the peptoglycan starts to pull in because the cytoplasmic membranes are reshaping, and if it's a gram negative, then the outer membrane will also start to pull in. And then before you know it, you have a complete new wall here, a new envelope. Because remember, membranes will only stretch so far until they just reform into two new membranes. So you go and you can sit there and you can watch this as these septae get laid down, different layers. This is bacillus subtilis. You can see different stains for different components of the cell envelope. And you can see that the one cell elongated a bit as it got ready to divide, and then it just started laying down new parts, new peptidoglycan. The membrane started to, you know, change shape. If you're looking at bacterial growth, how you look at it, how you're growing the bacteria is going to impact the overall growth pattern. Because yeah, all microbes do the binary or the mall bacteria archae do that binary fission thing. But how they do it will be impacted on whether or not it's an open or closed system. If you're doing what's referred to as a batch culture, which is what you were going to be doing in lab. You transfer over, you aliquot over, you know, you pick a colony, put it into a new, you know, sterile tube of broth, or you take and transfer over using droppers, whatever. And then you close it up and you set it in the incubator. It's a closed system. You're doing a batch. What we see is there is a pattern to all cultures, no matter what the species is. Now, the timing on this pattern, the temporal effect on this pattern, will be different species to species. Also, you know, what we see are these four phases for all cultures, bacterial cultures. Lag, followed by what's called exponential, or you'll see it in some textbooks, some papers referred to as log lag, log, lag, exponential, stationary, and then death phase. So if you go and you look at how many cells are present, how many viable cells, that's what we're counting, not total cells, viable cells, living cells, over time. When you first transfer over to a new broth, or onto a new plate or whatever. Those cells that are there are going to be in this lag phase. They are being transferred from a culture where maybe the viable cells are slowing down and getting sluggish because nutrients are depleting. Waste products are building up. It's making a metabolically Blah. Well, given a time, a few minutes, a couple of hours, whatever. And then the bacteria start to metabolically wake up as, ooh, look, more nutrients, high levels of nutrients, high levels of oxygen, you know, no waste products. And then they start to enter into becoming metabolically more active and start dividing binary fission. And then their numbers grow. They call this exponential because remember it's two, four, eight, 16. It's two to the N growth here, exponential growth. They also refer to this as logarithmic growth because for many of the bacterial cultures, the numbers are so big and get so much bigger so fast, the only way we can count them and talk about them uh, is as logarithmic numbers. So the logarithmic numbers will also shoot up here when you talk about them. 
viable culture not cell numbers. So you know, exponential or log phase, however you want to think about it. Lag, they're just starting to metabolically wake up. And then exponential or log, the numbers are shooting up. Now keep in mind, at this phase, this phase, there are cells dying. It's just here during exponential, there are just so many new cells being made due to binary fission that the dying cells, because they reached basically the end of their shelf life, is minuscule compared to the overall, here's the new ones being made. Given time, the numbers will start to taper. And then there will be this plateau, this plateau known as the stationary phase. The culture numbers, the numbers of bacteria present has maximized for that broth. Can't go any higher because there's just not enough nutrients there to sustain. And we start to see more and more bacterial cells dying. It's a teeter-totter thing. During the exponential, the actively dividing by binary fission outweighs the number of dying. So you see this great, great increase in population numbers. And then you hit the stationary. The binary fission starts to slow down a bit and the number of cells dying increases. So now you're at this balance. As the cells die, they're being replaced. So the population now becomes stable. But that can only be maintained for a certain amount of time as the nutrients levels start to deplete, as the waste product levels shoot up. And then you hit the decline where the number of bacteria going through binary fission starts to go down and the number of cells going into death or dying goes up. So when you look here at this figure, remember this green line is how many living viable cells are present, not how many total cells they're living and dead. So as the living cells shoot up during exponential, they'll hit this you know, balance, this plateau of stationary, and then things start to get depleted. And this number will continue to just go down and down and down. Time here. That's going to be different for every bacteria. That's going to be different for every bacterial culture. You know, depending upon how many are you starting off with here? Are you starting off with, you know, way less than a million? Well, then the time that can go through exponential to hit the stationary, the plateau, could be longer. Staph aureus going through this temporarily, it may be shorter or, yeah, it's going to be shorter than, say, mycobacterium tuberculosis, which goes through this. But instead of being measured in hours, it's measured in days because it's a slow grower. So lag, exponential, I'll let you read these so I don't go and keep repeating.